Okay, this lecture is called Total Body Ischemia. And the point of the, the lecture is that a tremendous amount of problems in the human body are due to a lack of blood flow. And this is not widely recognized. I actually made up this word, total body ischemia. Ischemia means lack of blood flow. Everybody knows that heart disease typically means coronary artery atherosclerosis, blockage of the coronary arteries due to growth of an atherosclerotic plaque. What's not so widely recognized is that lack of blood flow is the most common cause of dementia. I look at brains all the time. The most common things I see are sequelae of atherosclerosis plugging up the arteries of the brain, causing strokes, or much more commonly just causing chronic shrinkage of the brain, atrophy, due to neuronal apoptosis, programmed cell death, where the neuron just tells itself to die because it doesn't have enough blood supply, enough oxygen supply, enough glucose supply. Um, ischemia is also the most common cause of back pain. By far the most common problem one sees on CT scans and MRI scans of the spine, the entire spine, uh, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, is degenerative disc disease. And the primary cause of degenerative disc disease is due to a lack of blood flow. I have a separate lecture about ischemic spine as most common cause of back pain. And there were some papers in the past written about an association between abdominal aorta atherosclerosis, lumbar artery atherosclerosis, and degenerative disc disease. But I, I did figure out it's not just lumbar spine degenerative disc disease. It's all of the degenerative, degenerative disc disease of the spine. It walks its way all the way from the bottom of the spine, of the lumbar spine, to the top of the cervical spine. And the other common degenerative manifestations of CT and MRI of the spine, like diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, calcification of the disc, fusion, that's all part of degenerative disc disease, compensations for spinal instability due to the disc failing. Okay, next thing is blindness. You know, people will differentiate the different common categories of blindness. They'll talk about cataracts, age-related macular degeneration, diabetes, hypertensive retinopathy, glaucoma, for example, but they're all manifestations of ischemia, of vascular disease. You know, hypertension plays a little more prominent role in glaucoma, for example. You know, uh, cataracts, potential galactose toxicity, a little more prominent role in, in, in cataracts, but they're all related to vascular disease and the risk factors are pretty much the same. Okay, um, ischemia is number one cause of impotence. It's the same thing, atherosclerosis in the arteries that go to the Johnson as occluding the arteries of the heart. That's why impotence, which is super common, you know, described as 30% of men in their 30s, 40% in their 40s, 50% in their 50s, 60% in their 60s, it's very common, um, is due to atherosclerosis primarily. You know, the arteries going up to the brain, the carotids are about six millimeters, and the heart, they're about three millimeters down to the Johnson. The pudendal arteries are about 1.5 millimeters, so it doesn't take a lot of atherosclerosis to plug that up. And what's the point of this knowledge being useful? The point is, when you fix one problem, you fix all of them. If you minimize your atherosclerosis and do other things to optimize blood flow, you help prevent dementia, you help prevent back pain, you help prevent heart disease, you help prevent blindness. Everything in your body works better with good blood flow. Any wounds you have, any disease you have works better with blood flow. Your general intelligence will function better when you've got good blood flow to your brain. And the same risk factors for atherosclerosis and ischemia, they're the same for, almost entirely the same for hypertension and for diabetes. And those diseases cause kidney failure, leg amputations, neuropathy, um, so healthy aging means good blood flow, good arteries. You know, one of the most famous doctors that ever lived, Sir William Osler, said a man's health is determined by his arteries. Your arteries are either open or they're not. Um, and there's tremendous overlap in the risk factors for autoimmune disease as those for cancer. So when you minimize your uh, ischemia, atherosclerosis risk factors, you're also minimizing your risk factors of cancer and um, autoimmune disease. The populations that are low in atherosclerosis and heart disease and hypertension and diabetes are also low in cancer. Okay, what did we do to prevent ischemia? And by the way, I got a pretty good summary of this. This is a, one of my books called A Tale of Two Toes in a Hot Tub, How to Improve Blood Flow. And basically it compares two patients going through a series of medical problems and how their different attitudes determine their outcomes. Most patients have bad outcomes. I mean, I, I, for me, 
to become demented, to get your feet chopped off, to go blind. That's a bad outcome. And these things happen constantly, all day long, every day. And it's because a lot of patients, they want the answer to come from external to them. Oh, save me. And everybody, you know, doctors do the best they can and they have a lot of skill to help, but the person has to help themselves. Nobody can feed you and determine whether or not you smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, eat high fat food, eat meat, eat oils, eat processed food. I mean, if you do those things, you know, it's a lot harder for anybody to help you. All right, so everything functions better with good blood flow. Optimizing blood flow should be a key priority in healing any wound or fracture. Um, you look at that lady, Ruth Heidrich, you know, 86 years old, triathlete, in her 70s, hit by a car. She healed a fracture super fast because she eat two salads a day and 100% plant-based. Plant foods got the vasodilators like potassium and magnesium. Avoiding the sodium, it's a vasoconstrictor that's common with processed food. All of these things improve blood flow. Vitamin C helps to maintain the arteries, get it from your food. Uh, salads and cruciferous vegetables increase nitric oxide to vasodilator. Um, that increases blood flow. Being in the sun increases nitric oxide vasodilator. Staying warm increases uh, blood flow. I always have an extra you know, jacket around me uh, when I'm at home and my family says, why are you doing that? I like being warm. I know my blood flows better that way. It's another reason why old people go south to retire. Stress management. You want to spend as much time as you can in PANS. PANS means parasympathetic autonomic nervous system instead of SANS, sympathetic autonomic nervous system, because then your blood flow is better. You're, when you're stressed out, your, your blood flow is not as good to some of your primary tissues that you'd want it to be. Uh, avoid things that are perceived by the body as stress. Get your sleep. Sleep deprivation is perceived as stress. Avoid caffeine. I recommend no caffeine. Have a good sense of purpose in your life because that makes you more resilient and increases your ability to handle stress without having vascular complications of stress. Um, exercise because it gets your lymphatic flow going, which cleans out all your extracellular matrices around your individual cells and optimizes immune function. Most important thing by far is diet. But all these other things are complementary. And then avoid the things, of course, that limit blood flow. So just remember, almost all these diseases are all manifestations of the same thing, atherosclerosis. And when you fix one of them, you fix all of them. You'll be a lot healthier and you greatly increase your odds of staying mentally sharp for potentially extra decades and of having a longer, happier life.